listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Made to Lead Millions Podcast with visibility coach Crystal Henry. Discover our guest strategies and delve into their journeys to limitless success and inspiration. Let's enter the Made to Lead Millions Zone. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited that you are here today to be with me for Made to Leave Millions podcast. We are going to have an amazing, amazing show. We have a phenomenal guest. You know how we do it. I um, come and have a word of prayer with the Lord, give you a few announcements, and then I introduce our guest. Now, I'm so excited that you join me. I'm Coach Crystal Henry. I'm a visibility coach, 11-time Amazon best-selling author. I am not only a podcaster, but a TV show host. I'm a publisher of of two amazing books. And you don't want to miss out on my book lineup. Make sure that you are here every Thursday to get inspired to be empowered, to be pushed to an exceptional height of triumph. All of our guests are conquerors. They have been challenged in life, but they have overcome. So when you come here, you are pushed, propelled to your next dimension. I want to take a moment to thank our um, phenomenal producer, Jerry Royce, and Positive Power Media Positive Power 21 media family. Without them, where would I be? So I'm so excited for you to join us. Let's talk to the Lord and get down to business. Holy and righteous Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for just blessing us to be here almost at the end of this year. God, we thank you that it's 10, 10, 24. We thank you that Things are as well as they are and that you're making things better. We thank you that blue skies are ahead, that our future is phenomenal and nothing can stop us because we're all the way up. God, we thank you for being our God, our master, our shepherd, our king and our Lord. Have your way tonight, God, in Jesus name. Amen and amen again. Now, y'all know I love y'all. So I'm going to invite you where you need to go to get some help, to get some inspiration, you need to go to crystalhenry.net. I've got an amazing magazine that will be coming out this month. So make sure that you um, be on the lookout on all my social media. Make sure if you're not following me now that you follow me. You can follow me um, from crystalhenry.net. You can find me, Coach Crystal Henry, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, You can find me on LinkedIn. Just find me, follow me, and um, help me inspire your next business venture, your next book, your next connection. And speaking of books, I'm just so super excited about the Voices of Women Unleashed in Justice. We are out here in these streets just talking about our stories of injustices and how we overcame. The 21 women in this book are phenomenal, professional women, and you have got to get this book. How do you get it? You can go to Amazon. How do you get it? You can go to my um, website, crystalhenry.net. How do you get it? You can come to our next book signing. Now, we started the book signing tour in Kansas City, Kansas, It was a phenomenal red carpet event event that no one had ever seen in Kansas City before. Um, It was out of Cedar Cedar Family Orchard. Oh, my God. There were 6,000 apple trees there and a sunflower field, um, amazing ponds. It was just a beautiful background for a book signing. So that's where we started. Then we went to St. Cloud, Minnesota. Oh, my God. We had a red carpet event there and just shook St. Cloud, Minnesota loose. And so our next stop is 
Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So if you are near Oklahoma City and if you want to drive to Oklahoma, if you in Texas, if you near Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, make sure you meet us. We had a, a date change. We were going to do it November 16th. Now we're moving it up even closer, November 9th from 1 to 3 p.m. Make sure you meet us there. You're going to meet the phenomenal authors that are from Oklahoma, um, Carolyn Stampley and Kathleen Watkins. They are Oklahoma's own, but you will also meet me as the publisher, Coach Crystal Henry, the um, anthologist, the visionary anthologist, Dr. Evelyn Hill. Um, she is an amazing woman of God that brought these 21 ladies together. And then, y'all, there's whispers. There's people that they loved volume one so much, they want us to do a volume two. So if you have a story of injustice, if you want to join book two, volume two, make sure you hit me up, made to lead millions at gmail.com so you can be in volume two. Now, with all of that said, all of those great announcements, I need you to meet me um, in Oklahoma City at um, Good to the Last Drop. It's a coffee shop in Oklahoma City on November 9th. Meet us there. We would love to sign your book. You will hear our amazing stories. We'll be walking the red carpet there, too, and doing interviews. So make sure you meet us there on November 9th. Now, with that being said, not only... If you don't, if you um, have missed out in being in the magazine, Made to Leave Millions magazine in October, and you want to be in the next edition before the end of the year, make sure you sign up, put your name in and um, your application in. Just go to the Made to Leave Millions tab, magazine tab, and um, fill out that information right there at crystalhenry.net. If you um, are wanting to write a book, you're needing to your book to be published, you'd like your book to be edited, or you'd like graphics for your book, you can always hit me up at made to leave millions at gmail.com. Now, if you're needing a book coach, you found me. I'm right here. Check me out um, and email me at made to leave millions at gmail.com. So those are our announcements for tonight. We've already had our prayer. So you know what's next? It's time for me to introduce tonight's guest. This is a number one um, author who is from Newark, New Jersey. Her legacy is heartwarming children's books featuring her grandchildren. She has literary, literary prowess. And not only that, but this woman, ha! is a trooper, a powerhouse, because she has done 42 years uh, as a nurse in nursing career. And anybody that does anything in nursing is a true warrior. So I just can't wait for y'all to hear her story, to hear about her books. She is a serial author. She's in nine anthologies. She has a poetry book, a, a bishop's book, a nursing memoir. She's got it going on. And y'all got to make sure you get a paper and a pen so that you can connect with this phenomenal author, none other than Avalon Brown. woo Welcome. <clears throat> hello. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I am doing yourself. I am doing fabulous. I am doing wonderful. I'm excited. Um, in Texas, it's rare that we have like kind of like real fall days. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> it was a little bit of a fall day, not a hundred degrees, a nice little breeze. And so it was good in Texas. So that's exciting. So how are you? I've been doing just fine, especially since I'm retired now. Oh, fabulous. There's nothing like retirement. So let's start off with talking a little bit about you. I understand that you are 
um, from Jersey. So tell us a little bit more about your um, childhood, how you grew up. Well, I grew up in Newark, uh, North New Jersey. Uh, pretty much just, you know, a sister and a brother that were like 10, 15 years older than I was. So I was oh, wow. a baby child. Yeah. Um, I went to high school in Newark. From there, I went to Bloomfield College, which is like a city next to Newark. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much just working most of my life. You know, I went to school for nursing, started nursing around 1983, and just took off from there. I worked in the post op service floor for like 18 years. From there, I went to dialysis for 20 years, became a charge nurse, did three and a half years of clinical management. From there, I ended up back in the hospital working as an infection control nurse. Wow. Wow. And your retirement is recent, 2023. So I know you have (laughs) story after story, um, being a nurse, dealing with people. I I can only imagine um, (laughs) some of the stories or some of the things that you have been through. Would you like to to share something that was memorable or during your tenure um, in your nursing career? I, I, I think, you know, it always comes to mind about a patient. You know, a lot of times uh, you, you never really get, like, attached, attached to patients. Mm, but um, mm-hmm. there was one patient that um, when I was in dialysis, uh, and he was a young kid, and... I really got attached to this child. And he even came mm. to church with me a couple of times. You know, his parents had passed away. His sister was there with him. She passed away. And I got very close to him. And um, I was so upset. And I was in it. And he ended up having coded on the machine. Mm. And I, you know, I was just thankful that I was off that day. Because I'm not sure how I would handle it. I was really broken up about, you know, this kid. And it's like, it it touched me in such a way, you know, I kept thinking all I did. I saw his face. I saw how he come in smiling and talking to me all the time. And, you know, it, it really hurt me, you know, to see this kid, you know, pass mm-hmm. away. Yes. Because you know, I've always worked in, in, you know, like, you get close to patients, but not close enough for mm-hmm. to, like, tear at your heart, you know. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I like to sit and talk to the patients, hear what's going on in their lives and stuff. And, you know, just sometimes it's just uplifting for somebody to just sit there and listen to them. Yes, you know? yes. But, yeah, and I, you know, between him, it was him and another patient um, that I always remember. This patient happened to code on the machine also. But I was there that day. We all was around this patient, and I kept calling his name, calling his name. We did revive him. And when we revived him, he kept saying, Avalon, I heard your name. He said, I don't Mm. know what happened, but all I know is I kept following your name. I followed you calling my name and followed your voice. That's Mm. what brought me back. And wow. I'll never forget that. Huh? I mean, out of all the people, we all was around him calling him. But he said it was your voice that I followed back. Mm. You know, and, and I wow. woke up. Wow, that's amazing. Avalon, um, you're sounding a little muffled and your um, phone is, is sound like there's a little distortion. I don't know if you can maybe adjust. I don't know if you have earphones on or... Maybe your location. Okay. Is this better? Um, that's a little better, yes. Okay. Okay, yes, that sounds better. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I worked in a hospital environment for about 15 years. I'm an accountant, though. Um, so I didn't work with a lot of patients. But recently, my doctor that I have had for, oh, probably 30 years, um, just passed all of a sudden. And it just kind of put 
um, all of the patients. I mean, we found out from social media, a lot of my friends, we all went to the same doctor. And so we were just, you know, devastated. We were taken back because she was only 61. Um, and so we were like, wait a minute, you know, how could this happen? And not my doctor. And, you know, a lot of times when you're working in the health industry, you're super, super busy. But a lot of times we don't have time to take care of ourselves the right way. And being a nurse, I know it is difficult to, you you don't have lots of sleep. You you know, you got to get up early, stay late and all of that. How did you manage to keep yourself healthy and in, you know, this industry for 42 years as a nurse? Uh, When I look back, I don't know. I can only say that, you know, God was with me, you know. He was there giving me strength, you know, keeping me going. You know, I was there for a purpose. You know, my my objective was to make sure that my patients were safe and take care of my patients, you know, no Mm -hmm. matter what else Mm -hmm. was going on with management or coworkers. I was there for the patients. I mean, it. I, I, I can only say he gave me the strength because at least 20 of those years I was taking care. I had a sick mother at home at the mm, same time my God. living with me that, you know, I had to get up, especially when I worked in dialysis. I had to get mm-hmm. up 4 o'clock, make sure oh, she was wow. all set and breakfast and, you know, take her vital signs and everything before I, and I had to be to work at 5. When mm. I come home at 8.30, because my sister did come like 12 o'clock to check that to make sure she right. eat and all that. So all right. I can say is, you know, God gave it me was the a grace to do all mm. of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. So I can understand, you know, your nursing memoir um, and your anthology with nurses. Tell me a little bit about those two um, books. Yeah, so the very first book I wrote was It Was the Devil All Along, and that mm. was my first memoir about my nursing career and all the challenges I went through, all the uh, things I had to deal with management, you know, discrimination, Mm -hmm. a little bit of that in Mm. there, you know, especially back in the 80s with the hospital that I was in had maybe about five to six uh, black nurses. And I know there was one floor that I worked for 12 years. I was the only black nurse between all three shifts. Wow. So I wrote about all of my uh, challenges that I had in that. So I was planning on uh, reviving that book. But then Mm -hmm. I had uh, the mind like, okay, I have this type of story. There has to be other nurses Mm, that may have the same type of story to tell. So I was able to get 10 other nurses um, to tell their stories about their challenges in nursing and why it never made them quit. Why they spent, mm. you know, each nurse was from different uh, specialties. I didn't get mm. the same nurses okay. Okay. that I work with. I found nurses from different specialties and at least 10 years in nursing or more. Okay. And, you know, they were, they were willing to tell their story. And that's how that book became. Nursing is our passion. We can't quit. Wow. That's and I beautiful. also did a volume two mm-hmm. uh, about nursing. Men, we are nursing. We are mm. nurses too. We can't. Quit. Okay. That's based on male nurses and their perspective of nurses being a nurse, wow. being a male nurse yes. in an industry that's mostly women. Women, <laughs> yes. You know yeah. that is really special because I. Now that you said that, I, I I've had a lot of surgeries in my past, and so I've dealt with a lot of nurses, and most of them were females. And I can only, I remember my first, very first surgery and I was so embarrassed, but it was a male nurse that, you know, took me in there. And I remember being on the um, gurney, you know, as he pushed me in and I was young and I was looking up and I thought, what's going in those stirrups? And the stirrups were up high. And I was like, what's going in those stirrups? And I thought, oh, no. And by the time I was thinking, oh, no, the anesthesiologist, his, his, his medicine was working and I was knocked out. But, yeah, that was, 
<laughs> my yeah. only male nurse. So yeah, I, I can imagine that book um, because it's just not a lot of male nurses and they right. are much, much needed. So I can imagine that is and, an amazing book. Yeah. And what sparked me to write that is because I was talking to a friend of mine who's a male nurse and I was just joking with him about, you know, how, oh, you, y'all always get away with everything. The managers are always smiling. They never yell at y'all or, you know, give you kind of, you know, you get special treatment. And he was like, he corrected me to tell me, though, you're not looking at it right. We have to, it's harder for us than the mm. female nurses because a lot of times the patient don't recognize us and respect us as male, as nurses. They think we're the orderly or either we have to be twice as cautioned if we're mm-hmm. going in there to put a catheter in a female, we need somebody with us. With, so, oh, you know, yeah. that's why I said, let me write something on their perspective because I'm thinking the wrong way. I'm just looking at one way where y'all always get special treatment when mm. they have much more to worry about. Right, right. Yeah, I always thought, you know, how is, there should be more male nurses. How do you lift these patients? How do you you know, get some of these patients in position. And I'm thinking, woo, okay. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can imagine it's um, a very biased uh, environment for them as well. So um, that, I know that book is great. Make sure that um, y'all get these books now. (laughs) So... You've got that. Now, tell me a little bit about the Bishop's biography. This one, this book is about my father, um, his mm. life growing up, um, you know, from the South, uh, mm-hmm. wanting to be a bishop since he was a child. And meeting my mother, they, they both met each other on the same compound. They were two years old. Him telling her, uh, we gonna, I'm going to marry you at two. Two years old, wow. and they end up getting married at the age of 16, and wow. my mom was kind of telling me the story. You know, she was in the nursing home, so she actually kind of told me the story while I was, you know, writing down everything she was saying, you know, how he wanted to be a bishop, and they came up here when uh, I was about two years old to the north because my father was doing seasonal work and how, uh, you know, they they found the church and he started like the pastor there started teaching him and eventually made him ordained him as a bishop. And Mm. then he founded his own church in 1964. And uh, the bishop that's carrying the church now, because he died in 1993, he brought him up through the church from a, a, a deacon, assistant pastor and, ordained him as a bishop as he got sick because he died of cancer. On his way out, he made him the bishop and put him over the church. So Mm. I told the story of his life from a child all the way up to the time that he passed away. Wow, okay. Okay, wow, that's beautiful. Because, you know, a lot of times, unless we ask our parents, our aunties, our uncles, you know, unless we sit them down, you know, their story will never be told. And the things that our parents, our grandparents, our cousins and them went through, um, you know, needs to be told. It's part of history. So that's excellent that you were able to tell their story and inspire other people, you know, to, to get their parents story. I, I, um, my mom was complaining one day and she was saying, well, Nobody ever recognized me. And I said, well, okay, let me recognize you. And I sat down and I interviewed her. We ended up getting seven different videos of her life. And so I put them out on YouTube. I said, now whoever goes out there can know who Gaynell Gaynor is and what she did. And um, my mom is, is a phenomenal woman. And if wow. I hadn't have put that out there, I mean, she made some major feats, feats in her life. And I'm like, here it mm-hmm. is. Here is your story. And you're telling it on video. So no one can say that it's not you. 
And then she was able to show <laughs> pictures and, you know, pull out um, different things to support what she was saying. So I love that, that you were able to put their story in a book. Just beautiful. Yeah. Now, how did you get um, into the spiritual poetry book? Tell us a little bit about that. I have no idea. It just like (laughs) came to me, you know, and each of the poems, you know, I was just sitting thinking each of the poems are actually the title of each poem has was the thought from church, like the pastor's Mm -hmm. thought, you know, and the pastor Mm -hmm. always put his Mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. So I just started writing poems based off of the thought of the day wow, and okay. end up coming up with like 34 poems. And it's just, it was like a one-time thing. It's not, mm-hmm. I've never really mm-hmm. been into poetry, but those poems are things that go on in our life. Mm-hmm. Was, that's why I called them spiritual poetry because like, like one, um, just one I saw off the top of my head where I said I had to be born again. So mm, I okay. talked about, you know, being out in the world, but, you know, I can't remember the poem off the top of my head, but I mm-hmm. made them, but I know the poem dealt with like being out there in the world, having to come to church, having to come to God and having to be born again, you know, mm. through the word of God. Mm-hmm. So those, mm-hmm. are, those are the type of spiritual poetry. Those are things that may happen in life. And mm. so I based it off of the thoughts of the day or the teachings of the day from church. Wow, that now that's pretty powerful, okay? That is excellent. Now, you have been in nine anthologies. Um, tell us a little about, you know, you can tell us the title or a little bit about it, um, any of those nine anthologies that you'd like to share. Okay. So the first one I was in was The Pivot, and that had mm-hmm. to do with... Um, what made you change? What type of change did you do in your life? Wow. Um, the second one was Daughters of a King. Mm. And we all wrote about growing up with um, our fathers. How was our life wow. growing up with the fathers? Wow. Um, now, that's finding, really yes. good. That, now, that's really good because yes. we often hear about Black people or Black kids um, in homes without their father. So to have a book on that, that's, that's powerful, very powerful. Yes. And, uh, finding joy, uh, finding joy in the journey. I just put a poem in that one mm-hmm. about, um, you know, finding joy and during difficult times. Mm, and yes. then the single save, uh, struggle I wrote, um, a chapter about um, my experience as a new infection control nurse during COVID, mm. how I felt and what went on. Wow. Uh, okay. the new, yes. The new Renaissance, I, that was, I put a children's story in there about mm. one of my grandchildren. Okay. Uh, women in nursing. This was all about uh, nursing that left the bedside and opened up their own business. I wow. almost opened up, up my own uh nursing agency but mm-hmm. covid hit right at the same time so oh wow i wrote yeah. you know i just wrote about wanting to um right. almost opening the business down but not out that had to do with um things that uh knocked you down but you were mm. able to get up okay you, you know even good. though it knocked you down mm-hmm. and Blinded love when domestic violence is revealed. I my chapter has to do with years and years and years and years ago when I was married and had a little went through some domestic violence. Mm. So, wow, yeah, you you have had quite a life and and quite a lot of beautiful books that are so meaningful and powerful. So I encourage our listening audience, for you extraordinaires out there listening, make sure that you check Avalon Brown's repertoire, get get her books and check her out. Um, now, we haven't talked about your children's books, so let's talk about these grandbabies and how they inspired <laughs> you to write Right, right. So I was at a book expo and I met a school teacher from my town. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had never thought about children books. I was actually there um, exhibiting the My Two Bishops and Mother book. 
Okay. And uh, she she found out that I was a nurse. So she said, why aren't you writing children books that has to do with nursing your profession? Mm. That way you can get them into the school. So wow. when I sat down, I said, wow, that's something to think about. So mm-hmm. the first one I wrote about was title that came to my head was Mommy, Why Do I Have a Cold? Mm, and that was okay. like based on the granddaughter because she always, you know, had sniffles and stuff all year long, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I wrote it on that book about a little girl that wants to know where do colds come from? Why do I have a cold? So I put in there, it's, it's like an educational book also mm-hmm. because I talked about washing your hand, you know, coughing in your sleeves. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling the little girl different things, you know, eating behind other children, playing Mm -hmm. around other children Mm -hmm. that's coughing and sneezing, just Mm -hmm. and how germs float in the air, just different things um, that might make a child catch a cold. Right. Once once I did her book, I I realized, I said, wow, I got other grandchildren. They're going to want to know where's (laughs) their book. (laughs) So it just started a chain reaction, and I just started writing, you know, books about things that they like or things that that pertain to them. Wow. So that's how I I started that. That's how you started. Okay, so how many grandchildren do you have? (laughs) I have seven grands and three great grands. So I have written a book about most of the grands except for the last three oldest ones, the 20-year-old the 23-year-old and the 26-year-old because I'm not sure what to write about. (laughs) That's a tricky area, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a book on those three. Well, if they're in college or trying to get in college or get out of it or get through it, those are probably, that would probably be a really good book, um, especially with how did they choose what they're going to do in life. Oh. I know. Oh, that was That's the hardest thing. Mm-hmm. I know the hardest thing for me was to choose my, what I was going to do. Um, and I remember my counselor was like, oh, you have an analytical mind. You should be an accountant. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. great. That sounds good. So I went and like three years in, I was like, wait a minute. I don't want to do this. This is boring. <laughs> right. And then the counselor was like, well, if you want to switch, it's going to take you a year and a half. You'll have to take. I was like, no, I'm good. I'll just finish. I'm going to finish this and I'm going to be done. I'm getting out of here. And so (laughs) sometimes we need some help from the elders to to know what we're we're good at, you know, or what, you know, how to find our little niche, our space. So. Yeah, just talk, look, interview them, and I bet you'll have a book um, for their for those three older ones. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's exciting. Okay, so you have a book for almost, for all the youngins, for all the youngins, and that's ex- that is very exciting. So how many books do you have in total? Do you, have you kept count? Do you know how many books the you got? Children books? Yes. Ugh. Well, all your books. I think like, oh, everything. all of them is probably yeah. about <laughs> thirteen. It's probably about thirteen or fourteen of them. Because I wow. do have another nursing book that I wrote recently mm-hmm. too. Because I did like almost three books right there together. Wow. And then that one is called Nursing: A Guide for Nurses to Flourish in Their Profession. Mm. And this this book is based on like I'm um, talking about. Uh, if you want, if you have an idea that you want to be a nurse, like, you know, mm-hmm. as far as researching what nursing is mm-hmm. about, you know, right. different things, how to be team leaders, different things to help you flourish while you're being a nurse, especially if you're like a new nurse. Mm-hmm. This book will like kind of tell you everything that you need to know, everything you have to get into to be a nurse, all the parts of nursing that I know that I went through, I wrote, Mm -hmm. you know, I put in there as a guide. This is more of a guide book, you know, because nursing really isn't everybody's passion, but then you have a lot of nurses in nursing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are a lot of nurses, but um, unfortunately, it's still not enough, you know, even though there's a lot, 
there's not enough. It is not oversaturated, yeah. you know. Because um, most of them are leaving the bedside. That's mm-hmm, why. Mm-hmm. It's it's um very difficult, you know, the hours, the the yes. different things, the different doctors, the turmoil, the you know, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. And then if you it if you, if your life is life in, you know, that doesn't include husbands and kids and you know, mm-hmm. family. So when your life starts life in and you're trying to save the lives of other people and help them, it, it's a lot. It is a lot. So I understand why people come into it and leave. Yes. So your and their workload, di- you know, oh, it's so yes. much different from when I became a nurse. Mm-hmm. We might have had five patients to one nurse. Now it's almost eight to ten patients to one right, nurse. Right, right. That's very difficult. And new requirements, because now you've got, you know, the iPad that you got to fill out. Yes. You know, it, everything is electronic. And yes. so it's a lot different now. Um, you're still dealing with people, but now you got to make sure you've got everything, you know, charted correctly mm-hmm. electronically. So that mm-hmm. is challenging as yes. well. So tell yes. us how. Um, you know, people can get a hold of you. Maybe if they want to invite you to speak, get your books. How can they get a hold of you? Okay, all my books are on Amazon. If you just type in my name, Avalon Solette, S O U L E T T E Brown, the whole list of books will come up under Amazon. On Excellent. Facebook, you can just uh, author Avalon S Brown. Um, on Instagram is at Avalon, at author Avalon S, and email author Avalon S Brown at yahoo.com. Excellent, excellent. That is, it's just such an honor to interview you, to talk to you, and just get the insight um, that you're able to give nurses out there, the encouragement that you can give nurses out there. Um, before we leave, um, what is the, um, an, an advice that you would give to, uh, someone that is new, that is a new nurse that's coming in there green, what advice would you leave for a new nurse? The main thing is to make sure that you document everything that you do. And as a nurse, if there's something that you don't feel that's right in your gut, make sure you speak up, whether it's to the charge nurse or it's to the manager. Don't let things go by that you if you're unsure, make sure you go to your mentor about things. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We all came in new. I know a lot of the nurses now are so busy and they seem like they're impatient. But ask anyway. Make sure, you know, that you are sure of what you're doing. Don't just do something because you might regret it later. Mm, That's good. That's excellent. That's excellent advice. And one more thing. So for the nurses that have been out there, that have been out there for a while, and how can you help um, that nurse with tenure to um, not have burnout or how to defer their burnout you know um it's so you know it's an individual thing now with me um i never had burnout because Mm. for one thing if you can get on a unit and you work as a team everybody stop like this my patient that my work as a team you would have less burnout Mm. and me when it's break time, I take break. That's why you have mm-hmm. other nurses on the floor or a charge nurse to endorse your work to until you come back from that 15-minute break and take your lunch. I always took my lunch. Mm. I don't care what was going on. I took my lunch because you're supposed to be able to endorse whatever's going on with your patients in order mm-hmm. to take lunch. But a lot of nurses won't stop and do that. And that's what burn you out. Take your break. Take your lunch. Mm, mm, <laughs> the work excellent. is going to be there when you come back. That work is still going to be there. You know, um, I you have to get organization, too. I was a very organized person. 
And you have to make sure that you check and see what your priorities. Do your mm-hmm. priorities first and then do the other things later. And you'll find out that you'll be able to get out at least an hour after. You won't be there two or three hours past your time. Mm, that's good advice. Great advice. Wow, that's so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. One more time, share how people can connect with you and get your books. Can I just mention one more thing? Sure, yes. Yeah, my, pro- my new project, I I just, um, I have a new book that just came out, okay. Unbroken Spirit, A mm, Journey of okay. Redemption, Perseveration, and Healing. And that is also on Amazon right now. And this particular and book, I took all it? the... Uh, last month. Okay, September. Last All right. Month. So yes. this is hot off the press. Yes, and okay. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some people might have seen it already circulating, but this book I took all the different little um all the different little stories that I had and different challenges, things that happened in my life that I've been putting in other people's book, and I took and made my own book. I put mm. them all into my book. Okay. It made my story. Instead of being somebody's anthology, it's my memoir of Amen. all of the different things that, you know, I have gone through. So Excellent. this book, yes, just came out. You Excellent. can reach me on Facebook, Arthur Avalon S. Brown, on Instagram, at Avalon, or at Arthur Avalon S. Uh, my email is author Avalon S. Brown at yahoo.com. All right. Well, t- tell your latest release. Give us the name again. Unbroken Spirit, A Journey of Redemption, Perseverance, and Healing. Wow. Unbroken Spirit. That is so, so beautiful. Now, y'all make sure that you make this book an Amazon bestseller. Make sure y'all go get it tonight, right now. Um, We just had the Amazon, the two days on Amazon. Let's make 1010 a third day and get her book right now and get the other ones too. Make sure you put everything in the cart. Get it all in the cart from (laughs) it. From author Avalon Brown, Um, we just thank you so much for being on Made to Leave Millions podcast tonight. You have just just blessed my soul with your um, wonderful life and all of your books and just your amazing um, challenges of, of everything that you have overcome. Thank you for sharing with us. Make sure y all connect with her on all social media outlets. And again, thank you for joining me on Made to Leave Millions. Y'all make sure you My come. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Now, y'all make sure y'all come back next Thursday, same time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with none other than myself, Coach Crystal Henry. Make sure you connect with me at crystalhenry.net. And again, shout out to my amazing producer, Jerry Royce. And thank you, Positive Power 21 Media Family. It has been a phenomenal time tonight, and we thank everyone for joining us. Until next time, Made to Lead Millions podcast. We'll see you then. God bless. Good night, everyone. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.